Time now for the Nick Hart Show, our weekly chat with the head coach of the Gibson Southern Titans, Nick Hart. It's brought to you by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, including Absolute Custom Machine, LLC, ADG Architecture and Design Group Limited, Angermeyer Electric, Brett's Car Care, a t Concrete Supply, Brian Stevens Homes, Carriage Inn, Chips, SellMyTees.com, by Cordray Insurance Agency, LLC, Shelter Insurance, by Davis Brothers, Daylight Land Management, LLC, Daywig Meats of Hobstock, Dillbeck Properties, Diversified Instruments, Duke Energy, Emerson Cattle Company, ERA First Advantage Realty, Rodney Langford, by Fast Break Convenience Stores, by Flanders, by Fort Branch Car Wash, Foster Construction, Ryman Land Service LLC, by Hobstadt Summerfest, by Heritage Federal Credit Union, Heritage Petroleum, Hillside Gardens Landscaping and Garden Center, HMC Gears, in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis, by Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, Nathan Belote. By Jarbo Tax Service. JMCO Technologies. Johnson Commercial Mowing Incorporated. K&K Excavating Incorporated. Casey Fuquay, State Farm Agent. Kathy Solman Photography. Key Construction Company Incorporated. Kiesel Wagner Survey LLC. By Lively Machine Company. By Landscape Supply Incorporated. Lowry Ag, by MyTech Systems, Morton Solar LLC, by National Vet Health, by Ohio Valley Grain Inspection Incorporated, also by Parker Excavating, Perfect Climate Heating, Air and Plumbing, by Pole Concrete Construction, Prodigy Mold and Tool Incorporated, by Pro Rehab of Hobstock, Prudential Advisors, The Barthel Agency, Rawhide Golf Supplies, Ryano Family Fitness, Sandy's Pizza and Mini Storage, Shearer Monument, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Singleton's Country Kennel, Stodgill Funeral Home, Team Black Law PC, by Tai Chow, The Brass Ring and Pizza Kitchen, The Image Inks Company, Titan Construction Partners, TYFL, the Titan Youth Football League. By Varnado Construction. Vomac Truck Sales and Service Incorporated. We Simply Clean. By Whitledge Tree Service. And Young's Auto Body. The Nick Hart Show, a special production of the Wabash Valley College Radio TV and Digital Media Department. First, before the interview with Coach Nick Hart, as always, we look at the stats from last week's win against the Southridge Raiders. Chase Thaxton, 14 attempts, 83 yards rushing. Zach Foster, 6 attempts, 33 yards. Gunnar Alexander, 12 attempts, 41 yards. Colin Shear, 1 attempt, 1 yard, 1 touchdown. Zach Foster also had a rushing touchdown. In the passing game, Zach Foster went 16 for 25, 243 yards, 2 touchdowns, 2 interceptions. In the receiving game, Grant Stinson, three receptions, 23 yards. Chase Thaxton, one reception, 15 yards. Maddox Potts, three receptions, 61 yards. Boyd Sellers, four receptions, 48 yards, and a touchdown. Gunnar Alexander, one reception, 11 yards. Seth Parsons, four receptions, 85 yards, and a touchdown. Defensively, Cale Campbell with two sacks for a total of 15 and a half yards. Ben Reinhardt with a sack as well as Brody Klim. Now, to the interview with Coach Nick Hart. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Coach Nick Hart Show. I'm Riley Angel here with you. Coach, just jumping right into it, on Friday, it seemed that the boys might have come out a little flat, but they really bounced back in that second half. What was the message at halftime to them? Yeah, I don't know if it's so much flat. Um, you know, I think Southridge, uh, is a really good team. Um, I thought we kind of missed some scoring opportunities, um, that, that, you know, could have maybe extended the lead a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought just, you know, kind of battling, um, through some of that, I thought we could have been a little bit more physical up front on offense in the first half. Um, but, uh, no, the message at halftime when we had a lead, 
uh, we were getting the ball um, was to continue to play. I mean, we expected it to to be a fight. And, uh, you know, I thought our kids did a really good job of responding once Southridge took the lead. Um, they did a good job of responding and, and uh, you know, coming back and, and putting points on the board and putting, take, putting some stops together, um, you know, for us to be able to kind of extend that to two scores. Now, the past two weeks, you guys have been in fights to the very end. How does that prepare a team for the postseason? I think it helps a lot um, because you're you're going to get in those uh, type of scenarios um, at some point in the postseason. Hopefully, um, you know, hopefully you're you're not on the the bad end of of being down too much. But uh, um, no, I think it helps. I think the the more situations, tight situations, you can be in, um, the better. I think you kind of learn how to play. You learn how to coach uh, what what your kids do in those situations. Um, you know, I think that that does nothing but, you know, help yourself uh, as, as a football team to, to be in those those tight situations and, and finding ways to, to hopefully win. And Southridge came out with a bit of a different look, like you had uh, mentioned during the coach show last week, with that sort of mix of the spread in their traditional in their traditional offense. How do you, how well do you think the defense responded to how they switched it up? Uh, I thought they did a really good job. I think, um, you know, especially when you look at, um, we were down three starters going into the game and, and lost another, um, you know, in the first half there. Um, so a lot of guys that, that didn't have a lot of reps. Um, and I think it's a, a very difficult offense to pr prepare for. Um, they've always done a great job offensively in, in the way they attack. And so, um, you know, I think we made some mistakes. Um, you know, we we did not fit the the long touchdown run. We we did not fit very well. Southridge blocked it really well, but we did not fit it uh, very well at all. And uh, you know, there, there were some mistakes that were made. Um, but I think you know, for the most part, with the situation we were in and the offense we were going against, to uh, you know, keep them to I think they had 170 yards of offense. Um, I was very pleased with with the way our our defensive guys stepped up and played. When we return to the Coach Nick Hart Show, we talk about improving on mistakes and what it's like to play a postseason opponent in the regular season. The Nick Hart Show on 89.1 The Bash is brought to you by Absolute Custom Machine, LLC, ADG Architecture and Design Group Limited, Angermeyer Electric, a and Concrete Supply, Brian Stevens Homes, Brett's Car Care, Carriage Inn, Chips, sellmytees.com. By Cordray Insurance Agency, LLC, Shelter Insurance. By Davis Brothers. Daylight Land Management, LLC. Daywig Meats of Hobstock. Dillbeck Properties. Diversified Instruments. Duke Energy. Emerson Cattle Company. ERA First Advantage Realty, Rodney Lankford. By Fast Break Convenience Stores. By Flanders. By Fort Branch Car Wash, Foster Construction, Ryman Land Service LLC, by Hobstadt Summerfest, and by Wabash Valley College. How do you make sure that those mistakes that were there th this past week don't show up on Friday against Heritage Hill? Well, um, <laughs> If I had a way to make sure they didn't, uh, you know, we definitely um, do that. Uh, we wouldn't have made them last week. Uh, but no, you, you you try and coach and you know, show film, and um, you know our guys, our staff does a great job at practice of of trying to correct mistakes. Um, you know, we we have some guys that that are out there right now that that don't have a lot of uh, varsity experience that. Um, you know, we just have to continue to, to coach on the fly um, with, with what we do. And and I know we'll talk more about hair to chills, but, you know, similar to, to what happened, um, you know, fr Friday when we didn't fit something right and gave up an 80 yard touchdown, um, you know, hair to chills is, is very explosive and has a lot of home run hitters. And so, you know, if we're not fitting things correctly, if we're not lined up correctly, um, you know, they're, they're going to, you know, make you pay for that. So, um I don't have a, a magic wand to make sure that it doesn't happen. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we've got to get better at it and make sure, you know, try and limit the times that it happens, um, you know, control what, what we can um, with, with fits and stuff and, and try and keep those explosives from happening. 
obviously Southridge, a sectional opponent, same with Heritage Hill. How important is it and how much of, of an advantage does it have to see a sectional opponent in the regular season instead of for the first time in the playoffs? Yeah, I, I'm maybe a little um, on the opposite end of some other coaches on this. Um, I don't like it. Um, I th think, you know, we, we could do a whole show on, on our tournament series or playoff system, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I think that's one of the things that that is unfortunate about our system is, you know, us and Heritage Hills have played each other several times in the playoffs. And, you know, this first game, um, neither side's wanting to show a whole lot because you want you want to win um, when it matters the most. Um, not that either one of us is not trying to win, um, but, you know, there's a lot more adjustments and wrinkles that happen the second time that we play. And I think if you know, we, we had a system that some other states have where you don't know when you're going to see people or this game or last week mattered for seating purposes, um, you know, there would be a little bit more incentive, um, you know, to, to kind of put your cards on the table um, in, in this first matchup. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think these games are, are tough to manage um, because you want to win. Everybody wants to win. Um, but, you know, there's one potentially coming in a few weeks. It's, it's going to mean a heck of a lot more um, than the one you're currently playing. So you're, you're trying to kind of balance those two things is, is the way we've kind of handled it. And I know, just from going against them in the playoffs, you know, Heritage Hills has been very similar uh, to us uh, about not putting, you know, a lot of their cards on the table, knowing that there's a, a potential rematch coming. Um, and it was that way last Friday night with Southridge. I think both of us were you know, running a, a lot of our, our base stuff and, and and not trying to tip our hand on, on you know, some schematic stuff that you, you might use uh, whenever you get to the playoffs. How do you maintain that perfect balance between not showing – uh, all of your cards and still trying to get the win um it's it's tough and that's probably reason number one I, I i'm not a huge fan of the way we do things here but um um you know the main thing is you, you try and win the game um and um sure you you can they're going to adjust off of what we do um for a potential rematch and, and we're going to do the same um but i think you know both of us um Probably from the the playoff game last year, um, there, there's maybe some wrinkles that you have that um, you know you're, you're going to keep in your back pocket um, until that potential second rematch. Um, so, uh, and it's not earth shattering. We we both know each other well enough where um, you know we, we they have a good idea of what we're doing. We have a good idea of what they're doing, and it kind of comes down to to kids executing. I'm not saying that you know we we have these like magical plays that that we're holding off on but um I think there is some some minor adjustments and stuff that that you know both teams are probably going to keep in their back pocket um for the for the playoffs but and, you know the goal is to win and um we got the game plan in and and, and we're going to go after them and uh and, and I know that they'll do the same when we return to the coach Nick Hart show we talk about what it's like to be back at the jungle this Friday after last year's semi-state loss you're listening to The Nick Hart Show, brought to you by Heritage Federal Credit Union, Heritage Petroleum, Hillside Gardens Landscaping and Garden Center, HMC Gears, in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis, by Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, Nathan Belote, by Jarbo Tax Service, JMCO Technologies, Johnson Commercial Mowing Incorporated, k and Excavating Incorporated, KC Fuquay, State Farm Agent, Kathy Solman Photography, Key Construction Company Incorporated, Kiesel Wagner Survey LLC, by Lively Machine Company, by Landscape Supply Incorporated, Lowry Ag, by MyTech Systems, Morton Solar LLC, by National Vet Health, by Ohio Valley Grain Inspection Incorporated, Parker Excavating, and by Perfect Climate Heating, Air, and Plumbing. And with you guys traveling up to Heritage Hills once again this week, is there any reminder of what happened 
last year to end the season. And I know at the beginning of the year, you mentioned that you guys don't want to play for revenge, but does that ever seep in the back of your guys' mind? Um, maybe to the kids, it does some, um, it's not something we talk about, uh, as a program. Um, I just, I, I could be wrong in this, um, certainly, but, but my belief is you, you just kind of focus on what you can control and, um, you know, that, um, you know, a lot of our guys from last year are gone. They have some guys that are gone. Um, so there's a lot of kids playing in this game that didn't play in the game last year and, you know, the, the bottom line is, is once the ball is kicked off, none of that matters. It's just all talking points. Um, you know, it's going to come down to, to who blocks and tackles and takes care of the football and, and does all those things the best. Um, so, you know, just me as a, a preference, I, I like to focus on, on those things and, and hitting those points home as opposed to revenge or getting a win back or, you know, whatever, or, you know, keeping the, the conference championship at Gibson Southern. I mean, that's important, but like talking about it doesn't do you any good. Um, how you execute and how you play is going to be the determining factor in that. So um, <clears throat> that's what we kind of choose to to drive home to the kids. And um, I, I want that to be the message because that that's what's going to ultimately decide the football game, not us being mad about losing last year or trying to get revenge or anything, you know, that, 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 that doesn't score you any points or get you any first downs or, or get you any stops. Um, how you execute and, and play and compete is going to. And so, you know, that that's always kind of been our message and focus. Heritage Hills this year has an insanely dynamic quarterback back there with Jet Goldsberry. You've already faced a couple of these type of guys, especially with South Warren. Is there – Anything that you bring that you might bring back defensively from South Warren to Heritage Hills without giving too much away? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you can face and they're different, right? Um, you know, the the button kid from South Warren, what was he he didn't have the explosiveness that Jet did. He was he's a big kid. Um, he threw it really well. Um, he ran it well, but I, I think there's some differences in their style, but um, to your point, um, you know, you, you face some guys that can run and throw um, similar to to what he can do. Um, so it's a uh, it's, it's kind of balancing that. And, and I just think that, you know, maybe not even from a schematic standpoint, uh, but just a, uh, you know, seeing those type of kids um, can can really be beneficial and, um, you know, similar, somewhat similar skill sets. Um, and, and just, you know, being able to, to defend the run in the pass at the same time. Um, but he's very, their whole offense is explosive. Um, and that's why, you know, we can't make some of the mistakes we made on Friday night because, um, they have the ability to score every single time that they snap the ball. And, um, you know, it's, that puts a lot of stress on your defense, um, and, you know, I, I think one of the, the unique things about them is because of their explosiveness, but I mean, to their core, they want to run the football and control the clock. Um, so they're, they're very capable of doing both. Like sometimes you play big strike teams, explosive teams um, where you're like, OK, we, we want to make them hit singles and not home runs, um, you know, make them drive the ball down the field. Well, they're, they're very capable of doing both. Um, and so it's a little bit of a a pick your poison type of deal on, on what you're going to do to, uh, you know, to try and get some stops um, because they, they possess both of those uh, capabilities and they're very good at both of them. And defensively, I mean, their past three games, they've scored 38, 48 and 43, but they've only given up seven points in those last three games. How do you make sure you're able to kind of give them the test that they really haven't had so far this year from teams around this area? Um, yeah, they, I mean, for years, I think it's year 13 I've been here. Um, we talked about how they want to run the ball and control the clock. For the most part, they, they've always been great defensively. Um, you know, scoring against these guys is, is like, you know, going to the dentist. Um, uh, it's, it's not a whole lot of fun. Um, you know, trying to, to to put points on the board um, against their defense. Um, I think they 
what they do is they, they do a great job. They mix up looks, um, but they're they're so disciplined in what they do. Um, and they're going to make you drive the football similar to, to what we talked about. Um, I can probably count the number of big plays we've had against them over the years on one hand. Um, you know, they, they really make you drive the football um, and, and earn first downs, earn, you know, earn points. Um, so you have to be really disciplined um, in your approach as a play caller. You have to be disciplined as an offense to not make mistakes. You have to stay on schedule. Um, you know, it, it, it makes it they're, they're going to make you go um, with the way they play us. They're going to make you go. Uh, you can't go chunks at a time. You know, you, you're just going to have to methodically move your way down the field. Um, so um, it puts a lot of stress on you offensively to to execute at a very high level and, and put together those 10, 12 play drives, um, you know, to, to have a chance to score. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to have to take care of the football, um, be be sound up front. They're, they're very fast and physical defensively. Um, and like I said, they, they don't make mistakes. You're, you're not going to out formation them. You're not going to double move them. Um, they're, they're going to, to stay over the top and, and make you drive the football down the field. When we return to the Coach Nick Hart Show, we talk about staying on schedule and how a heavy slate of road games so far this year has prepared the Titans for this week's matchup up at the jungle. You're dialed in to the Nick Hart Show, brought to you by Whole Concrete Construction, Prodigy Mold and Tool Incorporated, by Pro Rehab of Hobstock, Prudential Advisors, The Barthel Agency, Rawhide Golf Supplies, Ryano Family Fitness, Sandy's Pizza and Mini Storage, Shearer Monument, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Singleton's Country Kennel, Stodgill Funeral Home, Team Black Law, PC, by Tai Chow, The Brass Ring and Pizza Kitchen, The Image Inks Company, Titan Construction Partners, TYFL, The Titan Youth Football League, by Varnado Construction, Vomac Truck Sales and Service Incorporated, We Simply Clean, by Whitledge Tree Service, and Young's Auto Body. Time to go back now to the Nick Hart Show. You've mentioned multiple times this year, staying on schedule. Expand a little bit on how important it is that on first downs, you can consistently get three, four yards. Um, It's incredibly important. I think when you look at just, you look at last Friday night, Um, I think... Uh, I might be off here is we've been now moved on to Heritage Hills, but I think we scored other than our turnovers. We, we only had to punt one time when we didn't get the first, first down. And I think that for us, like being a tempo team, the first, first down is the most important. Um, it, it really, um, the offense kind of gets flowing um, after that first, first down. And, you know, you look back to, Friday night, like I know the first three and out, we took a, uh, we, we got sacked on the first play and we got way off schedule. Um, we were in like second and 18. Um, and then I think the a couple of the other three and outs, we, we had losses on first down and, and put ourselves, um, you know, in a bad position. Um, so, you know, when you look at just all that stuff, I mean, the, the two, two things that we really try and focus on as a program are third downs and red zone. Um, and a lot, and then first downs that your openers. Um, and I think our defense has probably been uh, the best it's ever been this year, this so far this year um, on on third down conversion rates. We we were holding people to, I think it was twenty percent going into um, the Southridge game, and I believe that it you know stayed that Southridge was twenty nine percent on on Friday, um, and we've been pretty good on third downs offensively. Um, but when we're good on third downs offensively, right, you're in more advantageous uh, situations, third and two, um, third and three, stuff like that, where, where the playbook's kind of open and you can uh, you can really attack uh, what you're doing instead of it being third and 10 or third and 12 where the defense can pin their ears back. So, and again, that, that was a big difference in the game. <clears throat> Friday was, you know, we had uh, 
a red zone trip that ended in the field goal. We had a red zone trip that we didn't put points on the board. Um, and you kind of think about that and you, we lost the hidden yardage battle to giving up two big kickoff returns. Um, you know, we, we outgained them by a substantial amount, but there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, percentage type things that, that can really change the game. Um, and, and I thought some of our, our lack of red zone stuff, um, on Friday, and some of that hidden yardage, you know, really, you know, made that a, a tight game for us. And so far this year, as I mentioned, I mean, they haven't really been tested by anyone in this area, and their one loss came against that team in Louisville, in which they lost thirty-five to seven. So they haven't played in barn burners like you, like you guys have in the past two weeks. Do you think that could play in a little bit in the fourth quarter if the game is close? Um, I'd like to hope so, but no, I mean, they, um, they, they have a very veteran group, um, guys that have played a lot of football, um, you know, through their, their playoff run last year, they had several close games, um, including ours. Um, so, um, I hope so, but no, I don't think so just because of, of the veteran nature of their team and, um, you know, they, they know how to win, uh, they, they got a bunch of winners, uh, on their team. So, uh, no, I, I don't think that'll make a difference. I'm not saying we can't win a close game. I just think that, you know, they're not going to, to tighten up or, or make mistakes uh, because of, of of how much experience they have and experience in close games, even though it hasn't been this year. Uh, they, they had several last year um, through the playoffs and such. So, um, no, I think that, that, that they will uh, 100% be ready to go. They've got, got a great staff and, um, you know, kids with a lot of experience. So, um, no, I, I don't think that that will be a, a deciding factor. And lastly, this is your third road game in the last four weeks, your fourth road game in total. And you've played in some pretty hostile environments. I mean, Danville, Southridge last week, and now going to Heritage Hills. Is it important for you guys to have already played in some pretty hostile environments coming into Heritage Hills with the reputation that their home field has? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think, uh, you know, just getting used to, to being on the road and that whole, I think high school kids are creatures of habit. Um, so, you know, being on the road a lot here early, um, just getting used to, you know, eating, getting on the bus, um, you know, how all of that's going to go, um, you know, and it, it is a very difficult place to play and, um, you know, they, they always have a great uh, crowd supporting them. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, you know, the, the environment will be a little bit different um, probably than than what we've experienced on the road. But I think just that, uh, you know, getting used to that, that routine and stuff certainly helps a lot. All right, Coach. Well, thank you so much for your time and good luck this Friday. All right. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Nick Hart Show. Our weekly chat with the head coach of the Gibson Southern Titans, Nick Hart. It's brought to you by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, including Absolute Custom Machine, LLC, ADG Architecture and Design Group Limited, Angermeyer Electric, a t Concrete Supply, Brian Stevens Homes, Brett's Car Care, Carriage Inn, Chips, SellMyTees.com, by Cordray Insurance Agency, LLC Shelter Insurance. By Davis Brothers. Daylight Land Management, LLC. Daywig Meats of Hobstock. Dillbeck Properties. Diversified Instruments. Duke Energy. Emerson Cattle Company. ERA First Advantage Realty, Rodney Lankford. By Fast Break Convenience Stores. By Flanders. By Fort Branch Car Wash. Foster Construction. Bryman Land Service LLC by Hobstadt Summerfest by Heritage Federal Credit Union Heritage Petroleum Hillside Gardens Landscaping and Garden Center HMC Gears in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis by Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance Nathan Belot by Jarbo Tax Service JMCO Technologies Johnson Commercial Mowing Incorporated k and K Excavating Incorporated, KC Fuquay, State Farm Agent, Kathy Solman Photography, Key Construction Company Incorporated, Kiesel Wagner Survey LLC, 
by Lively Machine Company, by Landscape Supply Incorporated, Lowry Ag, by MyTech Systems, Morton Solar LLC, by National Vet Health, by Ohio Valley Grain Inspection Incorporated, also by Parker Excavating, Perfect Climate Heating, Air and Plumbing, by Pole Concrete Construction, Prodigy Mold and Tool Incorporated, by Pro Rehab of Hobstock, Prudential Advisors, The Barthel Agency, Rawhide Golf Supplies, Ryano Family Fitness, Sandy's Pizza and Mini Storage, Shearer Monument, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Singleton's Country Kennel, Stodgill Funeral Home, Team Black Law PC, by Tai Chow, The Brass Ring and Pizza Kitchen, The Image Inks Company, Titan Construction Partners, TYFL, the Titan Youth Football League, by Varnado Construction, Vomac Truck Sales and Service Incorporated, We Simply Clean, by Whitledge Tree Service, and Young's Auto Body. The Nick Hart Show, a special production of the Wabash Valley College Radio TV and Digital Media Department.